If you're anything like me and you love camping, but sometimes a tent just doesn't cut it, and you don't have a spare 50 grand lying around to blow on a camper van. You could do what I did. This is my 2008 Vauxhall Vivaro. And I'm gonna to explain to you how much it costs to build this budget camper. Now I built this van with a full working toilet, leisure battery and functioning kitchen. And it all cost me 700 pounds. Now the first step was finding a decent base van. So I took to Facebook Marketplace. Now I picked up the van for £3,000, but I'm not gonna include that in this budget because just say you've already got a van, which is a builder's van like how this one started out, and you just wanna convert it into a cheap camper that you can take away for weekends or any short day trips to the beach. Now one of the first hurdles that I found was that when I was building this, timber was really expensive, and it still is. One of the best ideas I've ever had was to go onto Facebook Marketplace, find any old furniture units, that are made of wood that I could retrofit to fit the van. This unit cost me £12 and I got it from Facebook Marketplace. It used to be a TV unit which I cut up to fit into this space. And it holds everything I need from a washing up bowl to a dustpan and brush, all of my cookware, pots and pans, plates, chopping boards, coffee cups, a little cool box, things like lighters. There's also food and water down there as well. It could also be a little bit better organized, but to be fair, I like to keep it well stocked so that if at the drop of a hat, we can go camping if we want to. For cooking, I use a regular camping stove that cost me 20 pounds. You can get them from any sort of outdoor shop. There's lots of different varieties of make. They all pretty much do the same thing. So other than the kitchen unit, as I call it, the only other piece of furniture in here other than the bed is this unit here. This unit's mainly used for uh, keeping sleeping bags and things like that inside, but I also store my leisure battery in there. In total, to build just this frame with the top and the sides, I did have to buy a new ply and a new top for it, but a lot of the inside is made from scrap bits that I had left over from when I made the bed. All in all cost me about 40 pounds. So to lift it up, it just lifts up like this and I've got a really simple design, a little hook there that just hooks into place to keep it open. On the left hand side is pretty much where I just keep my, my snorkel fins, my sleeping bag, bits and bobs. On the right hand side of the box, I've got the leisure battery set up. It is set up for a charge relay, which actually means that I don't ever have to plug the van into hookup. I can literally charge the battery as I'm driving along. I'm not really gonna go into how the split relay works, but you're driving along. When your alternator kicks in and charges your battery for the van, it then sends any extra charge over to the leisure battery so that it can charge it up while you're driving. Because I tend to use the van more than I actually camp in it, I've never actually ran out of electricity. And you're probably like me and you're probably thinking, Sean, I don't have a great understanding of electricity or setting any of this up, and neither do I. But you can learn how to do anything on YouTube, and that's what I did with the majority of this build. The leisure battery was probably one of the most expensive parts of the van. You don't really want to scrimp on a leisure battery because if you buy well in the first place, then it should last you. And if you ever get a new van, you can always take it with you. This one cost me 125 pounds. I tend to use this van quite a lot for day trips. I use it as a place to get in and out of my wetsuits. I do a lot of snorkeling and paddle boarding. So I needed a van that was hard wearing that I didn't mind getting sand everywhere and getting it covered in crap. For the walls and ceiling of the van, the walls were, I just literally repainted the ply lining that the van actually had in it when I bought it. I just painted it white just to sort of brighten up the area a little bit. And as far as the ceiling goes, I bought ton and groove paneling from B&Q. It cost about 15 pounds a pack and it took three packs to do the ceiling. As far as behind the ply lining, the recycled plastic bottle insulation cost about 20 pounds a roll and it took me three rolls to do the entire van. That includes the walls and the ceiling. I then wrapped it in super full multi-purpose insulation, which cost me about 30 pounds. The floor is literally just like a vinyl that you would put in your kitchen. Um, that's been glued down to the ply lining that was in the van already and then just cut to shape and it cost me 35 pounds as far as the toilet goes this is a this is a porta potty it cost me 80 pounds from go outdoors i built a small platform for it just to sit on and it's literally just strapped down with a strap it does the job i originally said that this would be for emergencies only but it's actually coming in very handy as far as the bed goes, this does pull out completely to make a double. I went with the bed design that pretty much everyone goes with, which is the alternative slat design. It works really well. The frame itself 
cost me about £90 to build. Like I said before, timber is expensive. The mattress is the other thing that I didn't really want to scrimp on. I went for three inch foam, and because of what I use this fan for, lots of outdoors stuff, a lot of getting in and out of my wetsuit, I wanted waterproof covers. So I actually bought some waterproof material and actually had my mother-in-law sew these cushions for me. They are fairly loose fitting, but that's kind of how I wanted it so that they would be easy to sort of take off and wash if I needed to. But they do the job. It's actually very comfortable. Once you've got a, like a bottom sheet down or anything like that, it's actually very comfortable to sleep on. All in all, with the foam and the covers, these cushions cost me around a hundred pounds. The van also has a fully functioning blackout curtain that slides all the way across. So because I like to do stealth camping in this van, hence why it still looks like a, a builder's van from the outside, I like to be able to just park up somewhere and make it look like it's just a builder's van so there's no way of anyone knowing that there might be somebody sleeping inside. So these blackout curtains I got from B&Q and it was literally one curtain, it cost like 10 quid and I bought some poppers online and it just pops in and stops any sort of light from, from leaving, leaving the van. So I can have all these lights on at night, it can be nice and lit up inside, but if all the doors are shut and the blackout curtains are across, it looks pitch black from the outside. All I'm saying is, if the only thing stopping you from getting a camper van is the budget, then don't let it stop you. If you also think, well, I'm not that handy, neither am I. The worst thing in the world that you could do would be to spend 50,000 pounds on a brand new camper van take it camping and realize that it's not for you. At least with this way, you can try it out, you can work out whether you do enjoy actually camping before you make the big commitment. But this has got everything that I need. So all in all, this camper van cost me, I thought I'd put the amount in post rather than me doing the maths in my head right now. <laughs> this is a little bit different to some of the other videos I normally make. My videos are normally about being outdoors, being in the sea, being at the beach, camping, staying in my van, stealth camping overnight so if you have made it this far consider subscribing it really helps the channel grow and if you like camping or stealth camping or any sort of outdoor adventures and you want to watch a video every sunday that's almost like being on holiday every week then this is the channel for you thanks for watching and i'll see you soon